Hi guys, Peter Finch here, and today we're going to talk about the different positions that you can achieve with the wrists impacting the pitching and the chipping swing, and exactly the differences that they will give to your game. Now, what you generally, in the most general sense of the word, want to be seeing when you're hitting chip shots and pitch shots is at the point of impact, the club to be moving down into the ball, the left wrist and the club shaft in a nice straight line, so not kind of breaking down, and that right wrist in a position there which is kind of slightly bent backwards like this. So it's in what you'd call a kind of slightly cupped position here rather than a bowed position with the right hand because it's coming in ahead and it's leaning that shaft forwards. Now what that will cause is as you're moving through the ball is a shaft lean ahead, left arm nice and straight, shaft nice and straight, ball first kind of turf impact, and then maintaining those angles as you actually move through the ball will send the ball out quite low. So if you're getting set up, I'm gonna, just gonna hit about 25 yard kind of chip here. So ball position in the middle, weight slightly forward, hands slightly ahead, and I'm going to maintain these angles between my left arm and my right wrist. Ball comes out nice and low. It will pitch, bounce, bounce, bounce. And this is a 56 degree, I thought it was a 60. This is a 56 degree, and it took off there, bounced, had a little bit of roll out at the end. And you'll notice here, a nice way of thinking about this, is where the shaft meets my left arm and my shoulders and my right arm here. Notice how this forms a triangle and the club coming out of the bottom forms a bit of a Y shape there between my arms and the club. So it's moving that Y shape back, rocking the shoulders, returning to impact with that left wrist nice and firm, that right wrist in that position, shaft leaning forward and then maintaining that Y position as I move through the ball. Now that is a very simple, very simple and a very effective way to try and ensure that ball first contact and then a little bit of turf. That lower flighted trajectory where it'll bounce, it'll skip, it'll hop, and it'll stop hopefully somewhere near the pin. However, there are variations that you can use. Now, what I would always recommend and the best way to do this is master that particular technique first. Master that Y shape first, get used to it, get comfortable with it, and then you can start adapting a little bit more. Because you notice there the height, the overall height of that chip shot. Now what I'm going to do on this one is as I take the club away, I'm going to maintain this Y shape still, so that's not going to change. But as I move through the ball, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and reverse this Y shape. So where I was here, what I'm going to do is as I come through impact, I'm going to change that Y shape. So my arms stay in a very similar position, my shoulders in a very similar position, but rather than my shaft being here at impact, as I'm coming through, I want to change it so it's on the other side like this. Now what that is, that's a breakdown of the wrist. And a lot of times when you see this with players, it can cause quite bad shots. It can cause the thin shots, it can cause the top shots, and all the rest of it. But what a lot of players do when this happens, and kind of see this quite a lot with kind of pupils who come in here, as they're coming into impact, that Y shape is broken down and those wrists break down before impact. And that changes the angle of attack, so rather than moving slightly down or level, all of a sudden that angle of attack is moving upwards. I am not talking about doing that. What I'm talking about is maintaining that Y shape until about the point of impact and then feeling like that Y shape is changing direction. It's a subtle difference, but a massive difference. Now, what does this mean for chipping? What does this mean for pitching? What benefits is this gonna have? Because there's no point in trying this unless it's gonna give you some kind of results. Well, what this does, it shallows out the angle of attack, gets the bounce being used a little bit more through the point of impact, and flies the ball up that little bit higher. So I'll give you these two examples, and I'll tell you what I'll do. No, <laughs> I won't hit it towards the camera. I'm not fully confident yet, but you should be able to see the difference in the uh, trajectories here, and I'll do a few kind of cutaways for you as well. So the first setup, weight, just a little bit on the front foot, ball position, middle of the stance, hands ahead in this classic Y shape, and I'm gonna be maintaining that Y shape as I move through the ball. So a nice kind of low flight, no breakdown in the wrist there. Now on the second one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maintain that Y shape going back, but at the point of impact, I want that shaft pointing pretty much straight up, and I'm gonna reverse this Y shape. 
Exactly the same setup though. Wait a little bit forward, ball position pretty much central. Then I'm going to move it back. And I'm going to reverse that Y shape. Now the actual strike there between the two, they were both really good strikes. But the difference in the ball flight was quite different. So the first one went quite low, bounced, skipped, and then rolled a little bit. That second one just took off higher, landed a lot, lot softer. What the second one doesn't use is the bounce more. I've given it more loft on the second shot as well. And it's caused a totally different type of ball flight. Now, what I would like you guys to do is just simply go away and experiment and try these two things out. I would always recommend getting the Y to Y position nailed down first because that will give a solid and consistent strike to the ball. But then as you're moving through, trying to reverse that Y shape and actually add bounce and add a little bit of loft to the club it can work for some people. This is not a video telling you to do it that way. It's not a video extolling the virtues of it because it is a tricky technique to get right, but it can work. And I use it in competition and I know a lot of people who use that in competition as well. So let me know what you think. Please comment in the box below, give it a go. And let's see, let's experiment together. That's all part of the fun of golf. Right guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.